Welcome back. We got the kayak strapped down up top. We're heading off an adventure. But this adventure is gonna be a little bit different. We got a little trick up our sleeve on this one. So lately, I feel like I've been using my phone too much. So we're gonna go on this journey, no phone, 24 hours, just a fishing trip. We're gonna put this in the glove box right here. And I'm not gonna to touch it until we come back here, which is gonna be about 24 hours from now. We're about to set off on this journey. We got everything loaded up in the Corolla. Got a change of clothes. Got my fishing gear, got my kayak, and I think we're ready to roll. Well, this is gonna make me sound a little old, but uh, on this trip, I'm gonna show you how we used to operate in the good old days. If you've never seen one of these, well, got the old map out here, and it's been a while since I've used one of these, but when I was a kid, we used to use these all the time. And um, yeah, I got to map out my route here. Luckily for me, this is a fairly straight shot to the lake we're headed to. And I live in the Bay Area, so I'm pretty familiar with the roads here, but once we exit the Bay Area, I'm gonna be relying on this thing to get to where we need to go and kind of keep track of our, our progress along the line. So the plan is, we're gonna put a few hours in the car stand. I'm not really sure how far we're gonna make it along the journey. Uh, if we're awake and energetic throughout the drive, maybe we'll drive all the way there and then just wake up and start fishing in the morning. If not, we'll just find a place along the way. Whenever we get tired, we'll pull over, find a little place to hide out, camp out in the car, and uh, then finish it up in the morning. But first things first, we're going along this line here straight out of the Bay Area, headed north. All right, let's get this show on the road. Well, right off the bat, first difference, no Bluetooth in my car because I don't have the phone. So uh, yeah, I can't play any of my own music. I'm gonna be using the good old fashioned FM radio. Every channel is Taylor Swift. Why do we park for this thing? All right, we got the majority of the driving done. But we do have one problem, and that is I needed to stop at the grocery store to get a key ingredient for our presentation tomorrow. And uh, I found one. I don't know if you can see it. It's a grocery outlet. But unfortunately, this place is open 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. So uh, that's not going to help us because it's now past midnight. And I'm not sure what we're gonna do here. We gotta find another restaurant and normally, or not a restaurant, a grocery store, but normally, you know, we could just search it on our phone, but um, yeah, we can't do that this time. So I'm not quite sure what we're gonna do here. Um, I guess I just gotta backtrack a little bit because I'm on my way out of town. So I think I go back into town and uh, I think I'll have better luck there. I'm looking for like a Safeway or, or something like that. So hopefully we can find one. Bingo. Safeway. Oh man. All right, fail number two. We found Safeway, but the Safeway's closed. They closed at midnight and it is now 1 a.m. But the good news is this one opens at 5 a.m. So we're just gonna find a place around here to park, take a nap, and we'll be back here bright and early in the morning on our way out to the fishing grounds. I gotta figure out how to get back there. I think I know where I am, but I'm not 100% sure. All right, we made it. Gonna need some much needed rest. I would set an alarm, but I don't really have anything to set an alarm, so we'll just wake up when we wake up. Should be after five, so by then we'll be able to hit Safeway, get some supplies, and then head out to the lake. We'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. Thank you to EcoPlay for sponsoring this video. Today we're featuring the 2400 watt portable power station. This power station has multiple charging methods. It can be charged via an AC adapter, cigarette lighter, or by solar panels sold separately. With the adjustable input power feature, this unit can be charged at varying speeds depending on your needs. The lower power options increase the lifespan of the power station, while the higher power settings charges the unit quickly when needed. 
In addition to the super convenient light located on the front of the unit, the power station can charge up to 16 devices at one time. With USB, USB-C, and standard wall outlets, it's perfect for charging all my camera and kayak equipment on the road. In addition, the lights help illuminate my tackle box and allows me to tie leaders even in the dead of night. With convenient handles and sleek design, the EcoPlay Power Station fits perfectly in the front seat of my car. For more information and to purchase a unit of your own, click the link in the description. Thank you again to EcoPlay for sponsoring this video. All right, Safeway haul. We got toothbrush, toothpaste, so I forgot that. And we got white shoe pig corn. We're gonna need to stay. All right, well, it's a little while to find it, but I've actually never fished this lake, so I don't even know where the boat ramps are. I was just gonna, my plan was just to drive out here and try and figure it out when I got here. So it took a little longer than anticipated, but I think I found a little spot right here where I can wheel my kayak down and get into the lake. And I saw a bunch of boats out there, which you can't see from here, but there's probably a dozen boats out there. I'm pretty sure they're all fishing for the same fish that I'm gonna go look for. So uh, things are looking promising, but uh, we gotta get out there. I don't even know what time it is, but the sun is very well up, probably eight o'clock already but uh, yeah we gotta get down there and start fishing so let's get this down there and then get going my kayak is covered in bugs straps look at this those are all bugs so I guess I drove through a little uh, minefield of bugs Alright. Ooh, that's nice. Refreshing. Alright, we're in. Okay, after what feels like a million hours, we're finally underway. catch some fish. So if you didn't know already, today we're kokanee fishing. So um, yeah, I launched in a little back bay area. I gotta make my way out to the main lake. I think, I see one guy fishing right here. I'm pretty sure he's trolling for kokanee as well. So uh, I'll keep my eye on the fish finder. We're gonna look for pretty deep water, I, I assume. But yeah, for kokanee, look for a long, whippy rod. And this is probably my best kokanee rod right here. It's just like an eight or nine foot, maybe deep foot. Super, super flexible. Really, really soft tip because those kokanee have really soft mouths. And I'll talk more about that later, but let me get this set up and show you exactly what we're using to entice these little lake salmon. Bass boat blow by me. So here's what we're using, a little flasher, dodger. I think this is actually a sling bait blade. I don't really know what the correct term is, but anyways, a little flashing mechanism and then a little leader and a little pink hoochie there 
and that's where that corn comes in right there. We strapped that little corn onto the back there. No secret that for whatever reason the kokanee like this corn. And then basically what happens is this this uh, flasher here, the sling blade, will wobble back and forth and give that hoochie a little bit of action. And I just marked a bunch of them right at like 60 feet. So let's go ahead and drop down here. I got my downrigger over here on this side. And maybe I'm a little biased just because I like salmon fishing. But in my opinion, one of the best feelings is seeing that rod pop off the downrigger. And because uh, there's no salmon season this year, at least in California, we've been deprived of that that ultimate feeling so today i brought the downrigger we're hoping to get some lake salmon that'll pop us off the downrigger and give us a little action so let's get this in place so we get this guy in the water and basically with this downrigger if you're not familiar with the downrigger it's just basically a really heavy weight with a little clip on the end and once that fish pulls it off the clip you'll see the rod bounce up and uh what this does is it really allows me to pinpoint the depth like to the exact foot that we're fishing. So if I drop this down, each turn of this handle is one foot. Some, some downriggers, at least the fancier ones on the big boats, they have, uh, they have actual line counters on them so you can see exactly how deep you are. But this one, a little kayak downrigger, not quite as fancy. So we can't see quite as closely, but each turn of the handle is approximately one foot. So we just keep track of how many turns of the handle uh, we're fishing. Then we can get back down to the exact same depth every time. And I want to get this down to about, you know what, let's just start at 50, see what happens. I saw some marks at 60, but usually predatory fish are looking up to feed. So uh, let's start there and see what happens. All right, 50 feet on the downrigger. And then my other rod, I'm gonna put with a little sinker setup to get that one down. There won't be any downrigger on this side, but uh, we'll try and get that one down a little deeper as well. So yeah, that's what it looks like. We got that big bend in the rod. All oh, it's just from that weight, the downrigger weight. And then when a fish hits it, boom, that rod should fling up. And then we'll be able to bring in the fish without any weight. So yeah, you watch that rod. I'll get the other one set up. And hopefully we'll find some fish. Shoot. I literally just turned the, the camera off to reset it and we got a fish on already. Sorry, I don't think you guys got to see the rod come off the clip because I was just stopped explaining how everything works and then I turned it off to reset the thing. I literally just set it down and then I clicked the camera to reset the the timer and it popped off right as I did that. There's our first fish. I'm pretty sure this is a kokanee. You know, we might not even get enough time to set up the second round. Oh, it's a nice one. Right, we're just gonna flip this in. I forgot my net. So we're just gonna flip them in today. Boom! Man, that, that one's fat. It took us a while to get set up, but once we got set up, it was pretty much immediate action. And that's honestly, I mean, I've never fished this lake before, so maybe this is standard for this area, but that's one of the biggest, uh, that is the biggest kokanee I've ever caught. Most of the time, or all the ones that I've caught have been in like the eight to 10 inch range. That one's probably a full foot, if not more, maybe 13, 14 inches. That's a really nice one. But uh, yeah, really similar to, you know, a trout. They're in the same family of the salmonoid, or salmonid family. Um, but these are landlocked sockeye salmon. So normal sockeye salmon are just like any other salmon. They go out to the ocean. But these are like a specific strain or whatever that only stay in the fresh water. And so that's why they have a different name. They're called kokanee. Real shiny fish. Got a little bit of a fork tail at the end. Just like a salmon. And uh, yeah, let's get this one in the bait tank and get back down because obviously there's a fish down there. Forgot my stringer as well. I forgot a lot of things on this trip, so we're gonna use this as my as my live one on the tank. All right, let's get back down there. Just go right back through that same area, I guess. Wasn't really targeting any area in particular, or just kind of went straight out to the middle of the lake, to be honest. And on my way there 
we got slammed. So let's just go back through that same area and see if we can replicate that. Uh, let's go right back down to 50 feet. Right about there. It's in the holder. Okay. Now you keep an eye on this. Honestly, I'm not even gonna set up the other rod. You just keep an eye on this. We'll see if we can get the uh, the pop up on the on camera this time. Fish hit it, but this thing popped off the downrigger. Well, there is. <laughs> I didn't even see it pop off the downrigger. Ooh. I was just adjusting the downrigger depth, and I think, oh, it just came off. I was just adjusting the downrigger depth, and I think as I did that, a fish hit it. Good sign. Things are working. I know you guys, uh, maybe you can't see it or you can't. The GoPro is not great at picking up stuff far away, but there's bald eagle right there. Oh, and he just swooped down. I don't know, he picked up something off the top of the water. There he comes. Here, let's see. Oh, yeah, he's got a fish for sure. There he is, bald eagle. Probably a fish that someone released and it didn't make make it. Oh, 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 oh. There's bite. There's bite. All right, watch this pop off. Pop off the clip. Pop off the clip. Out. All right, I have to help him out a little bit. Oh man, I guess I got him in the clip too good. Okay. I promise I'm gonna get one of these releases on film. I think I might have put it too deep into the clip that time. So it wasn't able to pop itself off. Up and in. I'm gonna keep this one. I'm interested to see which ones, like if the, the meat looks the same and if they taste the same, the big ones compared to the smaller ones, but that's a little more of the size that I'm used to catching. Oh, it just dawned me. Oh, cool, dude. Number two, look for three more. got on camera. Oh, this one's pulling drag. Nice one. Well, unfortunately, kokanee aren't the same thing as ocean salmon. You're not going to get any 20 pound kokanee, but when salmon season is closed, this is going to be the next best thing. Man, these are really good fighters for their size. Big one, another good size one. Up and in. Oh, he just came off right there. Oh well. If I had a net, I guess I'd, I'd have four fish already. Oh, no, no. Got him. Took, him in. Took me a little while, but another nice kokanee salmon there. That's another nice one. Similar size to that first one. Sorry, there's a lot of helicopter noise right now. They're doing some kind of 
I don't know what they're doing to be honest. Like drop, I, they're like carrying people and then dropping off in the hills. I think they might be repairing some power lines or something. I'm not really sure. But uh, anyways, that's number three. So yeah, I told people I was gonna do this no phone thing. Honestly, I didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal. But I told three people that I was gonna do it. And they thought, I, all three of them thought I was insane. I don't know, I didn't really think it was gonna be that big of a deal. Just come out here, hang out, pay attention to my rods. They were just so concerned that something's gonna happen and I'm not gonna, either they're not gonna be able to contact me or I'm not gonna be able to contact them. But personally, I don't know, I just thought, I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but maybe I'm the crazy one. Probably am, since three, it's three against one right now. But I'm curious to get your thoughts, so let me know in the comment section. And let me know what you think of the idea. And I'll do a recap at the end. And I'll, I'll open up my phone and we'll see how many messages and notifications and stuff I have. But, uh, but so far it's been fun. Nice and relaxing. Let's get out here on the lake and enjoy nature. And catch some fish. Another rod. Well, it got a little slower, so I had some time to finally set up my other rod and just now paid off. Finally got the fish on it. Got a huge one. Nice little guy. Pop him in. Slick little guys. And that right there is number four. Looking for one more for the limit. Yep, that's a fish. Yep, came off. Dang! Stripped me. Stripped the corn off of there. There we go. What I was saying earlier, the reason why we have these super light rods for kokanee is their mouths are super, super soft. And uh, you don't want to yank on them too hard, which is why I don't really like using this big weight because I feel like that weight kind of pulls on them a little bit. Doesn't give it as much play, whereas this setup, if I hook them on this one, you know, it can run all over the place and that rod tip is going to absorb a lot of the, a lot of the uh, fight, a lot of those head shakes. But with this big weight on this one, can't do that as much. So we're just gonna bring him in nice and steady. Got him next to the kayak here. No, 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 oh, it's freaking out, it's freaking out. Hopefully he's hooked good. Oh, oh, oh. Make this easy, make this easy. Up and over. All right, that's it, we got him. That's the limit. That can be the hardest one to get sometimes, the limit fish, but that one took good right in the top of the mouth. I don't think that one was coming off. So that's the limit. Three that are around this size, kind of on the smaller end, and then two really nice ones. All right, we did it, a limit. And with that, start heading back in we gotta we gotta climb that little mountain that we kind of scaled down to get the kayak in the water that's probably gonna be the hardest part of this whole journey <sighs> we made it all right I'm sweating bullets I got help from two very very kind people that were chilling on the beach they helped me pull it out. I don't think I would have got it up that hill without them. So I'm very, very certain that they won't watch this, but by some miracle they happen to see this. Thank you. You guys are heroes. Mission complete. Got a limited kokanee. Still haven't looked at my phone. It's been, I don't know, 20 hours or so. I'm gonna go get some lunch and then start making my way home. It's been a fun little challenge. A couple of things that I didn't really realize I know people always say you don't realize how many things you use your phone for until you don't have it, but 
one thing in particular, I brought my drone because I was going to use my drone and get some drone footage on this trip, but obviously you guys didn't see any, and that's because I didn't realize I was out in the kayak that I forgot that I need my phone to operate the drone. So I charged it up last night via this power station that I got and brought it in a dry bag and everything, all for nothing because you can't use it without my phone. And then just finding places to eat, places, you know, places to get gas, stuff like that. You're just restricted to what you can see and, you know, use the signs and stuff, I guess. But I wanted to go to like a burger place and get a milkshake for whatever reason. I was just craving a milkshake today. And, uh, and this morning, actually, I wanted to get a donut before I went fishing, but I didn't see a donut shop. And then I couldn't find a burger place, or at least not one that looked uh, incredible, at least we'll say. Some, there's some interesting establishments out here in the woods. We got a little bit of a drive back, but by the time we get home, we'll be over with this 24 hour challenge. And once we get there, we'll pop open the glove box. I might make one more stop along the way. If I do, I'll update you guys, but if not, we'll see you at home and see what's going on in the world. We have arrived. Let's check the magic phone here. Oh man, I don't even know where to start here. Things have gone down. Really, I don't really have that much. Well, I did miss a couple of YouTube videos, but fairly successful. I was able to survive out there in the wilderness. I didn't get too lost. I got a little lost, but uh, you know, find my way back, no problems. But uh, yeah, if you liked it, let me know. Maybe next time I'll do a 48 hour no phone challenge. But uh, yeah, I might need to get some, I might have to get some more maps if that's the case. But anyways, thank you all for watching. We'll see you on the next one.